Good afternoon everybody and on today's episode of Pinchao's Garage we are working on a 2011 Audi uh, A4 right? A4. A4 Avant and what we're going to be doing with Tyler as my guest star <laughs> we're going to be doing an air suspension uh, 3P by airlift see you guys right here and then this suspension is pretty much full bolt-on. So it's going to be a two, three day uh, DIY. But we're starting early today on Saturday. Uh, today we're going to be filming the removal of the suspension first. And then doing what you guys need to do along the way. So as always, brake, fix, and repeat because... <laughs> this is Pinchy Al's Garage. episode of Pinchel's Garage we're back at it on the Audi so we're just gonna be we're gonna make this one video so you guys can do the whole process at home so we already got the driver's side suspension removed because we had to do a little bit of figuring out to make this easy for you guys as well um, so there's only one difficult portion actually of this part on the driver's side and it's removing the uh, water tank for the wipers uh, we have to remove this so we can get to the four bolts here and then once that's removed you don't have to worry about that then you're going to work your way over here on the passenger side uh, when you take the cowl off which is really really simple there is one two three four bolts here that you're going to need to break loose do not remove them just break them loose uh, because you will need to remove them after we get the suspension off on this side uh, so we're going to walk you through all that process, so let's get to work. So back to the, the water tank. There's a 13 millimeter bolt right here at the bottom. Uh, and you'll see it. it's pretty straightforward to find. So you're going to take that one off. Leave it right there and on the wiper. I believe that's all you need to remove. Yep. And then, so it's going to be a pulling game. You're going to pull it out towards you. I mean, not towards you, away from you. And then, it gets, it gets caught underneath this uh, rubber weather strip here. So you got to be careful. Kind of wiggle it. There you go. Out. Uh, don't lose this. This is the uh, grommet here for it. That's for the firewall. We might have to clean all that out afterwards. And now that exposes the rest of the bolts that we need. Uh, there's one right here. Two. Three. And four. So three of them are easy to remove. The fourth one is probably going to be kind of tricky. Uh, I think these are going to be... A 16 millimeter we'll double check that in just a minute so it is a 16 millimeter uh, socket that holds the uh, upper portion of the suspension together Three. And 
now for the harder one. Be careful, there is a wire there. It's a ground cable. It's at a funky angle, so just be careful. Like I was saying before, if you haven't removed the bottom suspension yet, just break these loose for the time being. I've already removed this suspension. We're going to show you how to actually remove it in just a moment. But just like I said, break them loose. You don't need to remove them before you actually remove the bottom portion of the suspension. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right. Now that we broke those loose, these are next, so there's number one. There's number two, right next to it. Three. And give yourself a good extension, too. A good extension makes a world of difference for getting these bolts easier. Last but not least, number four. All right. Now we're going to work down below and get the uh, lower suspension taken apart. So on this suspension, um, it's very similar to like a B5 Passat or a B5 from B6 uh, Audi. So... They use a wishbone setup or a double control arm, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would suggest, like on the older cars, to take this bolt off uh, to pop off these arms. But it's this car is actually from the east side of the world, so it has a little bit of rust. So this one large bolt will give us problems. So we recommend taking the bolts off the actual rear of the control arms and the upper control arms first. Uh, there are 16s, so I would recommend using two wrenches. A socket won't be very useful for you here. So 216, I use a 16 basic wrench and then a 16 ratcheting wrench. This allowed me to get this, these bolts off pretty quickly. Once you do that, pull the bolt out. And then this, the arms just pop right out, which is really nice. Uh, next, right down here, uh, you got this bolt here for the actual strut. Right there. You got this one here. Uh, that bolt, you're going to need it, and you're going to need to get a chisel or a really uh, big screwdriver and pry it here to get, make this uh, shock uh, come out. The next thing I would recommend is removing the sway bar uh, linkage right here and then the last piece is down here below where my finger is at you're going to need to remove this bolt this will drop this arm down and then the whole suspension can pop right out so let's get to work So here's my wrench or my ratchet. One side. Okay, now it's starting to spin. So, 
Now, I got lucky on these wrenches. I actually got these wrenches on uh, the ratcheting ones on clearance at uh, Sears. So, got a good deal on these. Kind of for about four bucks a piece. For a decent, full, almost a full set, too. So there's the first arm. Make sure when you take the bolt and nut off, keep them together and remember where they belong to. Or put them in a the baggie. This is not, there's not many parts that are going to be coming off of this. So I'm not going to be worried about a baggie. If you had a really high mileage version of this car and you're doing this job, uh, this will actually be a perfect time to replace these arms. Because one thing I will give you guys a heads up on is that when these arms get really old, um, the bushings tear pretty quickly on these. Um, on my Passat, when you start riding lower, because I have a similar car, uh, pretty much when we went lower than an inch, these arms wore out pretty quickly. Um, so, that's a big recommendation is to pay attention on them and make sure they're not super worn out. If they are, you're probably going to need to replace them. So, these pop right out. Pretty neat twist them around out of the way so that gives you that uh, left and right play here so now we can get this right here this uh, 18 you need an 18 millimeter socket and a wrench on the other side and get that guy off I'm probably gonna use my half inch socket versus my 38 in an 18 There's a 16 right here on the end link. So you want to get that sucker off. Wait a minute. <laughs> So I'm going to use a breaker bar just to get this broken loose first. If I can, one of my shorter breaker bars. that's going cram your 18 wrench in the back of it just hold it washer there's a washer on this oh, looks like it's a fixed one so you're fine so 
So there's that. Remember the end link, because without removing the end link, this arm will not drop for you. So we're going to go down below. You're going to see right over here. There's the end link. But you want to do the top bolt. Don't do the bottom one. And then you got to do this bolt right here. Once you get this one off, this whole arm will drop for you. So now that we got the end link removed, the bolt for the strut, and the lower bolt for the strut uh, brace right here, now we can actually um, spread, use this, um, like I said, a big screwdriver or a chisel, hammer it in to spread this open, and then uh, you'll have to whack it down, and that should be it. It should pop right off. And then that will give you the room to remove the whole entire strut assembly. So now, just put a little bit of WD on this bad boy. You don't need that much. Just so it gets a little loosey-goosey. And what you're going to do is with the chisel, I'm using the chisel today. A lot cheaper than a spreading tool. Pretty much do that, and you'll, you just probably saw that already, that it was going down on its own already. So, yeah, I got them butterfinger hands. And that's it. It's all the way down and off. And that's why we got to remove that uh, end link, because it'll just hold it up. You don't want that held up. So, you know it's all really loose, because that's because we broke loose the four bolts on top. Um, so now that we have those broken loose, you just remove them, pull that whole strut assembly out. Um, the good thing about removing the control arms as well, it gives you that play so you can actually have the room to pull this sucker out. Okay, guys? My buddy Tyler here, the owner of the car, is going to remove that. So you guys get to enjoy that. All right, Mr. Tyler. Where'd you leave the other bolts? You left them all inside the holes? Uh, yeah. Okay. In there. Good. That way we don't lose them. Yeah. One thing you guys uh, will learn that there is an access port right here. And this access port is pretty cool because this lets you, uh, when you take it out to an alignment shop, or if you buy some uh, camber plates or uh, arms that have a uh, adjustable camber, you can do it from here. It's pretty cool. My Passat doesn't have that. Wish it did. Nice. That's out. All right, here's number four. A lot of dirt. That's it. Once you have the fourth one now, just wiggle it out. Pretty straightforward. There you go, sir. I'm gonna put that over there on that side. So that's the whole removal of the front end suspension. Now, just a cool pointer. This is the same exact process to do coilovers, or if you're going to be doing springs, or just re doing maintenance on the car. So this is kind of like a triple DIY. So enjoy. <laughs> so now we're at the rear suspension. The rear suspension is actually uh, a lot more difficult and a little bit trickier to do. Um, there's actually quite a few bolts that have to be removed. Um, there's two 16s right up here. You have to remove the staple that's here. Um, it will pretty much rip the, the fender liner just FYI. Um, so there's two 16s on top all the way down. There's a big 20 or 21 down below to hold the low sh lower shock. You will have to remove the upper control arm which has a camber adjustment so you will need an alignment once this is removed. Um, there is a triple square that you need to break loose but not remove um, for play. Those are, that's it. Uh, right down here. 
you guys can see my hand, there's a triple square right here. Um, this is a, what is it, a 16 millimeter triple square. You need to break this loose. You don't need to remove it, but it has to be break, broken loose so it can give you the left and, uh, I mean, forward and back play. If not, this thing's going to be super stiff and you're not going to be able to get all, um, all of it out um, to get the spring and shock out correctly. When was the S? So, remember that, very, very important. On top, on this control arm, I believe it's an 18. We're going to confirm that right now. Yep. So that's an 18. You will have to remove it. There are, like I said, camber plates on here. If you want to, you can do a marking on it uh, with the Sharpie, at least to give you back your default uh, camber. However, it will not be the same. I guarantee you guys, you will not line it up the same way it was when you took it off. Um, it's, but at least it's for reference. There's a control arm right over here. Let me get you guys. Right there. You need to remove that. That's an 18 as well. Uh, this will be, this will control the forward and back motion as well. Let's see here. And then down below, you'll see this sucker right there. That's the lash uh, bolt you're going to need to remove. And you don't have a headlight level on this side. It's just on the driver's It's side. all on the driver's side. So, uh, if you have uh, dual headlight levels, or there's a 5 millimeter bolt right back here uh, for the level uh, for your headlights on the driver's side. Remove that. Um, it's really straightforward. Just remove the bolt that's on the actual control arm, pull it up, and you're done. That's out of the way. You won't damage anything. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's get to work. All right, so here's the top one. Um, make sure you're going to give it a good little whacking to get that off. Tyler's going to get the uh, bottom bolt for the shock, which is a 21 millimeter. Uh, make sure you have a breaker bar. Because that sucker is in there tight and it's a big bolt. So, yeah. And he had leg day today, I mean, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your legs aren't helping today, are they? Maybe. <laughs> oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yep. There it's because I was pushing down on this side. That's why. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> ah. Well, one recommendation for you, don't take the bolt, don't take the uh, upper control arm bolt all the way out yet. You're going to need to remove the, uh, I guess the mid control arm, or trailing arm probably is what this one's called, uh, on the right. So you're going to need that so you can break it loose. Once you do that, then you can remove that all the way. That's preventing me from removing this bolt down here. Alright, so now that we got the top one removed, the uh, weird mid idler arm or trailing arm, whatever you guys want to call it again, uh, Tyler's finishing up on the uh, one bolt uh, he's been on for the past uh, 10 minutes. Almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, Tyler. <laughs> Once you get 
that one off. That will pretty much drop the shock. And then the next thing is we're going to need to remove the uh, control arm, the upper one. Uh, which is pretty easy. I mean, you can wiggle it forward and back. Whack it. There we go. Alright, so he's got that one. So that's all loosey goosey. Don't forget there's a washer in between the shock and the actual uh, assembly down there. Um, so remember that, yeah, look at that rust. Oh man, nice clean bolt down front. Super rusty in the back, out of the top. Um, so next, like I was saying, we're gonna get this right here. We gotta get this guy uh, removed. Or not removed, but pushed out of the way. ways we can do this. I'm going to use my extension. Wheel on it like I did yesterday. That'll pop that arm out. And that'll give us the up and down play that we need to get this last bit done. So this is on the other side, there's an actual uh, airline that goes right here. So, without a spring compressor, because you really can't have a space here for a screen, uh, spring compressor, or if you wanted to do, remove the whole entire assembly to get that spring out, by all means, go for it. We're going to go a little janky, and we're going to, you know, this is Speech Out's garage, so we're going to pull down on the spring with the big breaker bar and pry down until it comes off. Um, not the best of ways of doing it, but it worked and it saved us uh, about an hour's worth of work. So just be careful guys. I'm pre-warning you now. It's not the best option to do, but it's the fastest option. You'll see it's coming right off. that's the spring make sure you retain the bushing uh, we might end up using it I don't know yet until we get to that point but don't lose that uh, there is this cup that sits there um, it's not really like glued or anything or bolted in it's just a plastic cup with the metal base that's what holds the spring in Sits right there. Oh yeah, there you go. This is what holds it in, this little rubber grommet. <laughs> what, babe? Hold on. So now that you got the rear fronts removed, it's the exact same process on the driver's side as it is for the passenger side, so you guys are golden. Uh, we're going to show you how to remove the struts off of the uh, top hatch right here. The next thing you guys are going to see are everything you need to install bags with dual air compressors on this car. Um, this is a full 3P airlift uh, suspension. I am not sponsored or helping anybody from airlift. I'm doing this because this is what we do and we help people out. Uh, so we got rear airbags with the shocks. We got the front sh struts here. These are going to be probably the fastest things you're going to install is the front ones because they're super simple. Um, we're going to do a custom trunk setup, like nothing super crazy, but very simple rear uh, custom trunk setup. Uh, we got the two gallon? Two and a half gallon, yeah. Two and a half gallon seamless tank, not seamless, but polished tank. Uh, all the airlines, and we're going to show you how to wire all this for two compressors. Uh, show you where to how to use a voltmeter and how to find the right um, spots for voltage and making sure we get the proper grounds and stuff. So, yeah, this is everything you need to do uh, air suspension on this car. Uh, one thing I'm going to give you guys a heads up, you will have to hack the rear end out. Uh, you have to actually make a hole in one of your um, ports and I'll show you guys that. It's going to hurt me to do it, but we have to do it. Uh, let's so, get to work. 
for the top hats here, you got two ways of doing this. If you don't care for the actual shock being salvaged, then just use an impact gun and whomp using an 18. If you care for salvaging it, then you're going to need a Torx and then a deep socket and then break it loose by hand and take it off by hand. We don't care for it, so it's just going to come right off. Turn your volume down because it will get loud. Uh, put your foot on it right here. And it just... That's it. Now, you need to salvage the upper bushing. The rest of this is pretty useless. Uh, we don't need the bump stop. So it's just upper bushing and the nut. Uh, this is useless to us, so those two shocks have been removed. Uh, now we're going to put together the actual bag. So, this is your top hat with the bushing removed. Now there's a jounce top hat or bumper cup, whatever you guys want to call it, uh, that has to be removed. Uh, there's a couple ways you guys can go about it. So you have to remove the bushing. You're no longer going to use this bushing anymore. And you see this little cup here. Right there inside there. That cup spins. Well, this one doesn't spin freely. <laughs> uh, you have to remove this cup. So there's two ways you can go about it. You can grind it and try to bend it out. Or on this side, there's a little tiny, this one doesn't even have it. Oh, Shies and Wolfens. Um, there's supposed to be a little lip right here to give you some room you cram a flyhead screwdriver and you kind of hit it in there and whack it and bend it out of place. We just did it and you'll see here this is what has to come out, this little cup. Uh, you will, I'm going to tell you guys to give you a heads up, you will damage this um, top hat a little bit. Just take your time and be safe about it, okay guys? Uh, we, did a, we didn't damage it too badly, but it will be damaged. I don't think there's a way around that. Uh, just because of the nature of the of the DIY here, or the install, or the removal, I just I just don't see a way to go around it. Uh, we'll try to figure out a different way for you guys in just a moment. Um, just stay tuned. So we tried <laughs> a couple different methods. Um, you'll see here we tried cutting it, and it actually was uh, a bad idea because it didn't really work. It just made things a lot more difficult. So, easiest thing is a flathead screwdriver and a handy, uh, find the, a lip that's just good enough that you can hit hard enough, but pay attention because there's a lip on the inside which you can damage. Once you get a little bit of an angle on it, try to get it afterwards with uh, by prying it. Ow. And then having your friend smack it with a hammer right there. And then trying to get that that prying space. Go. Go. And you should be able to finally find a lip somewhere right there. You can cram it, cram it in there, and then bend it just like that. It sucks. Honestly, I don't like this, uh, what you have to do to your top hat, but maybe with a tiny Dremel, you can cut it and maybe cut it in two pieces um, to get it out. That will probably be the smartest thing to do. I don't have a Dremel with tiny cutting blades like that. Uh, maybe with the sanding attachment, you can probably get in there, but I don't know. I don't like this at all. Go for it.
almost there. Right there. Oh. Right there. There we go. That's how you get this sucker out. I think we spent twice as much time on that one than we did on the first one. But for all that damage, it's, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad because the the uh, bushing sits actually on the outer portion of that. But it's just, we're damaging it. I don't know, it just bugs me. <laughs> so you want to bring the other bag? Uh, you will have to preserve the top bushing. Because that is actually what's going to center your, um, your airbag. Uh, there's actually a little bit more drilling involved uh, when we get to that. And we'll show you what to do next when we get to that portion. But by removing that cup, this actually allows the bag to actually go all the way through to the top and then insert your nut or screw on your nut. Uh, it is a 17 millimeter, not an 18, but I'm going to use the 18 anyways just to tighten it by hand. We will use an Allen wrench and a socket to get this nice and snug. But that is the assembly right there. Uh, we will need to make right here um, the inserts here for the airlines. These are going to be steel lines that come out of here. Uh, we'll show you guys what to do for that. But that gets you going for this portion of the airbag where we got both of them ready. We got to show you what to do on the top portion when you install these. Uh, because you have to drill a hole for this bag because uh, this has a dampening adjustment on this uh, on this strut so you have to actually uh, drill through the top where this actually mounts so you can actually um, adjust the dampening on this so we got the line mounted and using the uh, fit provided uh, uh, airline fitting at the end so you're gonna need to make sure you get the steel braided one these are, these are for the bags itself so when you thread them on, once you thread them on by hand, uh, you're going to grab your uh, adjustable wrench and tighten them. Once you feel them, feel them stop, like getting really tight, then you're going to use about a quarter inch to a full inch uh, turn on here. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Because this is what they call a quarter inch MPT. So this is a tapered threaded uh, um, item. So you can't go further than that. If you do, you'll end up snapping or breaking the actual material here. Same with goes with all the ends on these. These are all quarter inch MPTs. So tighten them. Once you feel it stop, give it a good one, like quarter turn or a full inch turn. It's up to you guys and how comfortable you feel. And that's it. Don't go any further. Uh, that's it. Uh, so on your top hat here, make sure this bag doesn't spin. So um, it's going to make it difficult to, how can you say... Uh, adjust your airline so what I, we ended up doing is making sure we're completely centered on the back here on the back so when we mount this this is actually centered to the back of the car uh, we haven't been able to figure out though if we can spin this or adjust this yet other than that the bottom piece uh, spins and not the top portion uh, which is going to be pretty difficult for adjustments for you guys when you actually have to do an adjustment to change your height of your strut tower to get your comfort level set up so we don't know where we're going to be at so we're going to leave everything from how it came out of the box and then go from there one more thing uh, we're going to need is a shallow 17 and a vice grip like I said a five millimeter allen wrench hold the top down go left and right and tighten until it's super snug once it's snug you're done pretty much do not use an impact gun to tighten these down uh, that's a no-no it will damage the uh, the inside of the uh, strut here so do it by hand okay guys so we're on the driver's side uh, of the car so it's gonna be the exact same process so we recommend to have a buddy um, to hand thread the bolts on top of the strut tower while you hold it down below this will make life a lot easier for everyone if you do this you sure this is the driver's side? I 
think this is the driver's side. Give me the driver's side one. Driver's side. Give me the other side, I mean. Because this one, there's a... Oh, it doesn't seem right. I'll double check it. I know this one isn't fully assembled, but... Yeah, this is the driver's oh. side. <laughs> All right, so we got the wrong side put together completely. So we'll show you in a little bit, guys. <laughs> all right, so now we we got the right uh, bag all done. So remember, get your buddy. Make sure he's up there, and you line up the holes for him. And just get that top all in there. I'm gonna thread it in, not to put it in tight, just put it in so you don't have to hold this for so long. We'll just get the first three nice in there. You got them? Yeah, you got to uh, have to let this drop. There we go. And then now you can push it up. You can leave it alone. It's already there. Yep. So we're all in. So reverse the process and it's all in your, uh, your, your suspension again. Same way you removed it, put it back the same way. Um, this won't be anything difficult, like I was saying, just reverse the process. Uh, what's going to matter the most is running the airline, so we're going to film that for you guys, but just reverse the process on your install. I know I sound like a broken record, but you'd be surprised how many people don't pay attention. Um, get everything nice and snug on top, nice and snug down below. Rebolt your, uh, uh, remount the, um, the lower arm thingy here. I don't even know what you want to call this. But you want to put that back. Um, it's a lot shorter uh, because this strut is shorter. So you need to jack this up so this can actually uh, get back and line back up. So you need to bolt in the bottom first and then line up the, the bag here and get all that mounted. And then get your end link as well put back on. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, we'll show you pretty much the full assembly once we're done. So just stay tuned. So now that you guys saw what we were doing, we're going to do a quick breakdown. So remember, the two control arms on top, they're both 16 millimeters. You need to put those back on and tighten them. Uh, look up your torque specs for this vehicle. Uh, tighten the four bolts on top, your, uh, your top hat uh, for the shut tower. You're going to need the 18 millimeter right here. You got to tighten that back down nice and snug so this doesn't drop. And then the 16 millimeter for the end link right here, the bolts on the other side. And then the last thing, but not least, is the 18 down below here, where my finger's at. Uh, that's the last thing for the lower uh, control arm. And that's it, tighten everything down. This will definitely change the, um, the sitting height of your um, suspension. This will sit a lot higher. So just don't freak out when you guys are reinstalling everything. It's actually changing the, the, the height of everything for you already off the bat. Um, the airline, we're going to run right back here uh, and zip tie it to the brake line right here so it doesn't wiggle too much. Uh, we're going to zip tie it in an X pattern. That way it doesn't rub and dig a hole through it. Uh, the strut tower itself only moves at an angle when you turn the steering wheel, which is great because that means you don't have to worry about uh, rubbing and causing a hole in here at all. So keep it nice and snug towards the back, zip tight here uh, to these brake lines, and you should be set for that portion. Uh, repeat the process on the passenger side. It's identical. There's no difference, so I'm not going to give you guys a DIY the for that side. The rear is where the challenge comes in, and... The next step is actually we're going to be doing pulling out the fender liner completely because there's actually some cutting involved in, 
and the strut tower here for the rear. Uh, the last thing for the front though, uh, FYI, uh, here you will need to drill a hole up here so you can um, use the dampening adjuster. So we'll show you guys how to do that when we get to the end of everything. This is like, that's last, last bit. But we want you guys to see progress is already almost done for the front. The rears are going to take the longest. And I usually love doing the rears on bags, on cars. But for, the, for some reason, this car is just a headache. All right, guys. So we've come across a small hiccup. Um, not a bad one, but it's a hiccup uh, that we are having with the rear bags. That airlift does not explain to you in their instructions. Sorry guys from Airlift, you guys should be a little bit more thorough on your guys' uh, install manual because there are some things that are, look dangerous or unsafe during the install. And on top of that, the two bolts that you guys provided for the lower uh, uh, washer plate for to mount the bracket is also incorrect on a 2011 Audi A4 Avant, just to give you guys a heads up on that. So. On the passenger side where the gas tank is, you guys see here where my finger is at, the actual bag top rubs against the uh, fuel nick, which is very big no-no. Like, that's not safe at all. So we uh, kind of bent it uh, in so it prevents any type of excessive wear. What we're going to end up doing is probably getting like a cloth or something nice and sturdy and cramming it in between so it doesn't rub uh, all the way through and that's something more soft so it doesn't damage it um, another thing he is here I um, mean on the DIY it does explain that you have to do a cutout right here as well on their manual however they don't explain that there's a fuel line right here for vapor that's in the way that's very dangerous that you can cause some damage or you know get get the car catch on fire anything like that so something you guys got to be careful with when you're doing this uh, very very cautious underneath uh, the bag Right here, there's a plate that goes underneath that lines up everything. The two bolts that they provide you, there's a short one and a long one. They do explain that you might need to use one or the other. However, they don't explain that. It's still probably not the right length. Either way, we ended up using a washer to prevent it uh, from being all loose. Um, when you guys make your hole up here, uh, we're going to show you how to do this, but I just want to give you guys what we had to go through to make this work. Um, make sure this hole is big enough for a socket. Uh, what size socket were we using for that nut? We were using, that one was a... It was like a one, one in, in something. We're, we're going to get that for you guys right now. One and three sixteenths. Yep, one and three sixteenths socket. That's a big socket that you have to get in here to tighten the nut that's underneath inside here. And they'll show you, like, it, bar it barely fits, you know. And we had to use a breaker bar just so we can get the leverage we needed. However, it just, it took forever. I mean, we're just trying to give you some pointers here so you guys can uh, be pre-warned when you guys are getting there. Because I don't want you guys to have any damage or, you know, damage the car at all. But once you get that done, it's pretty straightforward and easy. The airline is going to go from here, up here, to this grommet. If you guys see this. Uh, you're going to poke a hole through it. Just be careful not to damage any of the wiring. Poke a hole. It's going to come inside the uh, trunk here. And it's not actually here. It's right over here on this side. So you're going to grab your finger and have a buddy push through the, uh, the grommet until you get the hose out. And then you can feed it where you need to do. We're going to show you how to run all the um, airline and wiring in a little bit. Uh, that's going to be later in the DIY, but we wanted to give you guys a big heads up because Airlift does not explain that problem in their DIY or their manual. So just to give you guys a uh, heads up. Alright everyone, so we're going to do the rear bag install. We finally did the passenger side, so now we're going to walk you through it and uh, show you what to do. Um, you're going to need a Dremel, you're going to need uh, metal cutting wheels, cut off wheels, because you're going to have to cut through your body. I know, that's kind of the thing I don't like about it, but 
It's part actually of the DIY process uh, through Airlifts DIY. Um, so you're going to need also a little pick. And what this pick is going to help you do is pull off, because you have to pull off the fender liner completely behind here. And what it is, I'll pull one of these guys out for you guys so you can see it. So here's this little um, thing. You're supposed to pinch them back and then slide it up and pop them out. It works better if you just grab a pick, bend it out, and then slide it up and out. It cuts my time in half versus trying to pinch them off. Um, so do all that. First, you're going to need a T25 Torx for the uh, fender side, uh, rear fender right here. There's a couple T25s right here, but everything else is using these little grommets that holds it in. Do that first, and then we'll show you what to do next. All right, guys. So, sorry to cut you off, but we're trying Never. to finish here. Never. <laughs> sorry. So the right here where the bag sits, there's a rubber grommet. You're gonna pop that off. And as per airlift, they want you to cut straight down and across, so you can bend this out. Okay. Uh, just an FYI, take your time. There's nothing dangerous in this area where they don't mention there's a fuel tank on the other side. But I'm going to calm down just a little bit to give you the heads up. It's okay. This isn't uh, that vital. I don't know what this goes to. Looks important, but just be careful. It's out of the way. Um, so just cut straight down and across, and that's it, so we can bend it over. Uh, use a Dremel. Uh, we're using this little uh, Harbor Freight Dremel, using Dremel actual accessories, uh, cutting wheels, and that's it. Alright, so now that we got the cut all done, you're going to try to pry this. Once you get it bent up, oh, sorry guys, bent a little bit, and grab yourself some large vice grips. Tighten them down. And then bend it all the way back. Give yourself a little access door. Now that, now check your socket. Obviously we didn't make it big enough. And this time I actually went bigger on purpose. So we're going to have to grab it here and bend this out a little bit more so the socket can actually fit in here. Just like that. And again, this socket is a 1 and 3 sixteenths standard so the next thing is to actually to put your bag in here um, with a little plastic perch uh, you should already tighten the threads here this should already be tightened did we tighten it yet or no you know I didn't I tighten didn't. it you didn't I didn't okay then we didn't tighten these yeah this is not on here yet So once that's in there, once you have that all nice and tight, you're going to literally squish the bag and cram it in here. Somehow. <laughs> this is an issue we had before on the other side too. Don't put that in there yet. Let's try to get the bag first. There we go. There we go now. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Now get that bottom piece in. 
So that little perch that was down below that you guys took off the plastic one, that lines up against the back rail there. Um, Airlift supplies you with two bolts, a long one and a short one. On this 2011 Audi A4 Avant, you have to use a long one with two washers at the end of it. They do not provide you with washers. We pre-warn you because the bolt is actually too long for this uh, for this DIY. So another thing is this plate. You'll see the hole is offset. Now the hole has to be facing the back towards the car like this not facing the front of the car right other way around like this and towards the the hole needs to be the front all right okay so yeah has to be facing the front of the car and not the back of the car yeah. just remember that underneath this matches the perch underneath the car and that way you line it up with the bolt underneath so bolt that on will be good they provide you with the plastic nut out of all the nuts in the world is plastic um, that's what they use for the bag underneath um, and what you're going to need to do is use a jack and jack up the uh, suspension to put some tension right here so we can get that nice and straight so you want to grab the jack sir now it's a uh, same setup as on the other side like we showed you we're going to run the airline over into this grommet and then into the trunk uh, tomorrow when we get to that part of the DIY we'll show you um, I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing that today yet I haven't gotten to that point yet so all right so now for the rear shock you're gonna need a 14 and an impact you want to grab that for me no it's not a 14 that's to install it remember install it. Yeah. that's for the other one Hold your horse. All right, so remember, turn your volume down, but you're gonna need to impact this off because we're not reusing it at all. All we need is just the uh, strut tower cap. We don't need the bump stop or anything. We just need this portion right here. Uh, with the new shock, you're going to grab that. All you need to do with the new shock that we uh, got is put it in. Nothing special. And then put the new nut on here. And we're going to use socket and a five millimeter, 14 millimeter socket and a five millimeter Allen wrench. Hold, hold that. Yeah, I'm going to grab the wrench. Got it. Got it. going to do is going to hold the, the allen wrench in place while I tighten it. Now you don't want to put these back on with an impact. Again, if you do that, you will end up damaging the shaft on here. Um, and you don't want to do that with your brand new shocks. And these shocks from Airlift are not cheap. How much were they? About 500 bucks? Yeah, 400 or 500 bucks for running there. Yeah, for airlift rear shocks. Okay, guys? So, grab it. Okay, and you're going to put some tension on it. And... Hold on. There we go. And then... That's it, huh? Hopefully... Okay, good. <laughs> freaked out. I'm like, oh. So that's it for that. You guys can see that right there. Nicely installed, nice and tight. Okay, so uh, there's 
the uh, dampening adjuster right here built into the shock tower. Uh, it's 30, 30, right? Yep, 30 way. 30 way adjustable dampening. So I just put it around halfway, which I have no idea where that is, but we're just going to pretend that's halfway. Uh, you're going to adjust it. Uh, make sure you measure your height from here, from the bottom thread to the top, top thread. Um, that way you can match it up to the other side and make sure your height is the same. On the front shocks, we measure two and a half inches on the front. On both left and right, we're going to see if we're, where we're at on this one and then make sure we're identical on that side. Uh, if you are and you're golden, if you're not, adjust them until you're set. And then once the whole air suspension is completely done and we air out, we have to adjust accordingly until the height is uh, the desired height is set pretty much. Okay, guys? Oh, shit, I wasn't even filming. So... Make sure you guys have the two 16 millimeter bolts in here. The way that we got the shock in here is by compressing it against the wall and uh, angling it in here. And then just hand tighten the 16 mils. Now down below, remember to use this washer in this side. Not on this side, but on the inside and the bolt across. Just like that. And then you're going to compress the shock and get it in there and that's pretty much it and then tighten everything down to spec. Alright so now the next part of your DIY is your trunk setup and your airline running. Um, as per Tyler a lot of people say they run the front airlines underneath through the wheel well. I personally think that's twice the amount of work so what we're going to do is use the exact same grommet to run the rear airbag. Um, inside the fender liner so we're going to run everything through the front go all the way down into that grommet and into the trunk underneath uh, through the plastic here uh, so what you're going to need to do is remove the the trunk lid the side two covers when you pull this one off on the side it is there's a cigarette lighter you just got to pinch it and pop it off that cover comes right off um, Tyler was going to put all his stuff in the in the back seat because we can't keep it out back here so, thank you Tyler. You can put that in the back seat because I don't want to damage any of your stuff. <laughs> Same with the carpet and all that. We want to put all that back there. So this trunk cover just comes right out. Exposes the spare tire. The spare tire has to come out. You're no longer going to be needing it. Since we're not going to be... We're going to be hiding everything in the spare wheel well. You gotta take that cover off over there. That's gonna give you access to the other grommet that's over there. It's it's actually about three to four inches up from here, and about two to three inches to inside uh, the wheel well. We're gonna need to to get that grommet. On top of that, there's um, this thing here. I don't know how to explain it, but it's this this plastic thing right here. We're going to pull this out because uh, we're no longer going to need that. We're also going to pull out the spare tool. We're also going to pull out the insulation here to get everything mounted correctly and for it to fit correctly. Um, that all has to come out so we can get everything going. It might actually have to be cut out. We don't know yet. So these are held together by the one, two, three, ten millimeter extensions. Okay. A ten, a ten millimeter with an extension ratchet. There you go. Man, look at these elbows. Jeez. See it in the video, man. We've been on the ground all day, so pretty dirty. So what we're trying to do, we're going to do a quick mock-up of what it's going to look like. Um, what, we're, what you guys are going to need to do this whole entire DIY as well at home.
So all this pops right out. Grab that tin over there. So I already got this all out here. The nice thing is that the battery is in the trunk. So with that being in here, we can run and cut a lot of the wiring and make it really short and really nice and clean for you guys when we actually do the, the, the trunk setup here. And there's one right here. All right, so now everything's removed. Um, if you want to grab the tank, I'll go grab the air compressors. We're gonna give it. Like I said, we're gonna show you guys what's gonna, how it's gonna look, just by laying it here. We're not actually gonna mock it, like do an install. All right, so we took out the sub box, the battery tray, and the tools here. So we're giving a basic mock up here. So you'll notice. Um, I already got a plug on one side because we don't need all four of them to be used. So we have one airline here, one compressor, I mean compressors here with the 90 degrees. We have another 90 degree to go straight to the water trap and then that's going to go to the manifold. And then we'll have the four airlines going underneath and going under to the manifold here nice and tucked away so that'll be the entire air setup here. Um, again, we're going to be running airline through this side airline through this side to here we're going to show you guys how to run it through the rear and through the front to make it look nice and tidy that way you have nothing that rubs it or damages it for you but we pretty much have everything already set up and uh and installed so we just got to run airline and do the um trunk uh, the one last piece for the front though is that right here since this is the 3P performance, we're gonna have to do a center punch, drill through it, and uh, we'll have the, to, so you guys can use the dampening on top of the uh, strut here. Very, very simple, nothing crazy to worry about. But yeah, we got the bag all in there, all mounted in the airline. You'll see the airline fitting there, right through there. We're gonna hide it and keep it there. We're gonna zip tie it close to those brake lines and then run everything across underneath the car on the front. Um, we're going to show you how everything goes, but I'm just giving you guys what's going on uh, so you guys can see everything that we've already done. Pretty straight, again, identical. The airline's straight behind it on the back. Uh, the nice thing about these cars, when they turn, this uh, strut doesn't turn with it. It just actually uh, angles itself, so it's really nice. You don't have to worry about damaging that line while driving. Uh, for the rear, uh, this is the most important uh, spot on the passenger side because it's next to a fuel line guys we're well, not fueling but a fuel for the fuel filler neck so I'm still not really content in how airlift designed this upper cup it's really large they're gonna have to probably redo this design because it's really sitting on this really really badly we even hammered it in to bend it and it's still touching so I'm not a fan of it but it is what it is and that's how Airlift gave it to us, and it did not mention that in their manual. So I'm mentioning it for you guys, and for Airlift to pay attention to this, especially. Um, but yeah, everything's bolted in, nice and snug. This is your dampening adjuster here for the rear shock, uh, the bag. Remember to use the cups here to cover it and keep it protected from dust. That um, Your airline's going to come out through here and come up all the way over here into this grommet. We're going to make little holes here. We're going to run the front airlines as well behind here and tuck it into that as well. And that's it. And the trunks, you know, I started off with that. And that's it, guys. Um, we're going to be working on this tomorrow and finishing it up tomorrow. So peace out and have a good one. As always, Pinchao's Garage, working hard, breaking, and fixing things. And then repeat. There's Curleen. There's Tyler. So we're back. We didn't give up. We didn't stop for the rest of the day. So we're actually going to, we just ran the uh, driver's side airline and we're going to show you that because it's really, really, really simple. So here's the airline, the main line that goes here. We tucked it in through here all the way down underneath. And then 
you'll see here make sure you guys can see what I can see right there there's the airline tucked in and then we followed it this way went all the way down all the way to the end so we ran these little quarter inch little mounting uh, tabs here and just screwed right into the plastic um, these are self tapping screws really good um, thick and have a good coarse thread so they won't back out on their own so all the way down and all we did is on the high spots on the plastic here we just put another screw and held the airline in place <coughs> all the way over here to the end and you'll see we got the line coming out right here we're gonna tuck it in behind the uh, fender liner right here and then we're gonna go up and then zip tie it to this plastic line here against this wall so nothing gets damaged and then we ran it through this grommet right here I poked a big hole so but it's still tight enough that it's keeps it kind of watertight then we went over and fed it through here down underneath this uh, little cover enough slack to lay it down flat here and then underneath the manifold and it'll be nice and hidden and look purdy um, if Tyler can hold that for me just like that pointing a little bit down there you go I'll give you guys a quick little demonstration on how it's gonna look for you guys We're still going to have some wood to hold all this stuff in place so it doesn't look like this bad. But you guys kind of got the gist of it. The airline will fit further and nice and nicely tucked underneath just like that and the man management will be there. All the wiring will hide underneath as best we can. Same with the relays and everything. We're going to kind of keep them up. Uh, tucked in behind here and all the wiring um, and then we're going to run all the wiring pretty much to here that's the nice thing about this wagon because everything's back here versus up in front it makes a li life a lot easier the hardest thing we're going to have is to run the controller wire all the way to the front to the uh, <laughs> center console which we're going to have to figure out uh, tomorrow when we tear it all apart um, this process is identical for both sides we'll show you how to run it but I just want to give you guys a really quick quick uh, routing to how we did it um, it's like I said it's super super simple all right so now we're gonna show you how to run the airline okay guys um, so here's that little flapper door that we made here there's the airline right there so first off you're gonna need a uh, some airline Mm -hmm. And the flathead screwdriver. That's your line. My line. So what we're going to do is we're going to first feed it into the car. So we're going to use a smaller flathead screwdriver to pop off the grommet right here. Just like that. And then we're going to poke a hole a little bit higher up inside this grommet. Just like that. And then with the bigger screwdriver, you're going to poke and make that hole a little bit bigger. And just spin it until you can make it fit. And then we're going to feed this wire, I mean, the airline right through it. And now, with your buddy on the other side, he's going to look for that airline and feed it through. And you remember how we're going to feed it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. If you remember the, uh, earlier in the video, he's going to feed it underneath the, uh, the trunk tray and just feed it to the um, actual manifold. Once he has that all ran length, um, we're going to go from there. You guys can see where is the grommet. There it is. Let me see if we get more brightness for you guys. And he's 
pulling it through right now. No, we're good. You can see the grommet. I mean, we filmed it earlier today. Got it? Yep. To length? So what we need to do next, once he has it to the length that we need it on inside the car, we're going to need to cut this right here. Now there's a special cutting tool if you want to grab that for me, Curling. So what you want to do is make sure that this, is, this uh, airline does not get rubbed or kinked in any way to get damaged. Um, so try to do the best you guys can to bend things out of the way. Um, and then there's a special cutting tool, this guy right here. You'll see it has a little blade here and it's uh, triangulated. That way we can uh, go all the way down. I give myself about an inch to half an inch of extra slack. Just like that. And then I just... Come on, Aaron, man. Pop it in. That's it. And then see this little extra slack right here so we can use this run a zip tie right around this plat rubber hose and that way there's nothing uh, obstructing it and causing any type of weird damage to this rubber hose to this airline that we don't want to cause a zip tie would just keep it from vibrating and going anywhere the next thing is you're going to need to hammer this uh, piece in uh, once you're done um, one thing though before I actually uh, put this and finish the, the DIY on this side for that rear bag. Earlier in the DIY, we pulled this rubber grommet out. We need to you reuse it for the airline. This will prevent it from having any type of damage around this corner because you'll see there's some sharp edges and we don't want to like I said, again, we want to prevent any type of damage to this plastic line. Just like that. And before we do that, that line is in there, nice and snug. You're going to grab your hammer and hammer this back in. Hammer. Hammer that plate back in. So... that I don't think I can hammer that well, maybe It's the best we can do. I know it sucks. I don't like it. But that's how the DIY from Airlift wanted you to do it. And there's that. So with that grommet back in, this is safe from any harm of these sharp edges. Um, personally, uh, I would probably run a really thick thing, uh, layer of RTV here. So that seals up and does not get any more water going into this area I mean because this goes inside your frame if you decide to move out of state out of California where we don't have salt roads but you go to an area where it does snow and they have salty roads you're gonna get salt and uh, water inside here and it's gonna rust the crud out of your car so uh, because the water won't not, not go anywhere and it'll stay in there so that's a good little tip for you guys so that's ran and I showed you earlier how it runs inside the car so I'm not gonna worry about that but that's this uh, rear bag. This is the exact same process on the driver's side, so I'm not going to show you guys that. Um, later, we're going to show you the DIY for the uh, front airline, and just uh, and later today. Uh, I think we're done for the day, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're done. We've been working since what nine? Yep, nine. This way, probably even a little earlier than that. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I was. Yeah, I was. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Peace All out. All right. So now. Since we finished the uh, everything pretty much on the car, we are now working 
on the trunk setup. The trunk setup is pretty straightforward. It, uh, we'll show you in just a minute. Let me uh, get you there. So this is what the trunk setup is going to be like. And you'll see we made a little uh, mounting board for everything. Uh, the manifold is going to sit actually right above here. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet for that type of mounting yet. Because uh, we're going to figure out where the gas tank sits behind here. So I know it sits uh, a little further back, but I'm hoping that if we drill through here, we should be okay. But this is a dual 444 uh, compressor setup with a two and a half gallon tank. And the way that we made the, uh, the board or the cutout, very, very simple. Get yourself a big piece of cardboard, like here. And what we ended up doing is use the uh, cover first, to just the first cut with the box cutter. We cut it to a generic shape and then pretty much just trim and trim and trim until it goes all the way down and finally get it around the battery and everything and make it a very very generic cut uh, once that was done we were able to get our our board so the next part here we're going to show you how to do the wrap because we're going to put a fleece around this so it looks a lot more presentable and then um, we're going to wire everything up and we're going to show you how to wire this whole thing up uh, the accessory wire on this car is going to be using the 643 relay uh, right over here you guys can see that uh, we have to use that relay to get the accessory wire so this whole entire setup can actually turn on and turn off so here are the three tools you need some adhesive multi-purpose adhesive I'm using super 77 box cutter or a blade and a staple gun with a couple staples uh, those are your tools now your material after you find you get your cut got some fleece I paid like 10 bucks for this fleece here this is like a universal automotive fleece so they use this a lot for like subs so you're gonna unravel this or unroll it and get it to the length that you want or how much you want to cover I recommend about two inches all around of access or leftover or whatever you guys want to call it so it looks like about two inches there give it a good stretch uh, fleece is really nice because it has a good little stretch to it but it doesn't uh, pull back as much as other type of cloths so when you glue it or stretch it over a corner it doesn't want to like unglue itself because it wants to pull back on you so once you figure out your distance here just cut what you want doesn't have to be super clean this box cutter isn't working I think it's got a brand new clean other side I think this is what we used yesterday Now the reason why I'm just cutting it like all crappy 
because we're not going to see the bottom of this of this board, so it's not really going to matter as much in how the bottom looks, only the top. So once you have that, you have your shape, you want to lay down some adhesive here. Maybe not let it squirt everywhere. <laughs> Now make sure you lay down a heavy amount of glue. The heavier the better. Because uh, it'll be nice and tacky and sticky. Just like that. And then lay down your material. And then just spread. Now, you want to make sure everything stays really, really flat, really square, as best you can. Just like that, very, very simple. And then turn it around. The next part here is you can, if you want to, lay some more glue. But you only need to lay it on, around it. You don't need to lay it the entire board, so. Just the edges will matter. Just like that. And what you're going to want to do is pull. Pull the material as nice and tight. Okay? Now, if you're a perfectionist, um, I recommend start get, bring, get a good pair of scissors and start cutting uh, a bunch of leftovers, which I'm going to do in a little bit to get all the corners nice and clean. Like this axis, I want that all gone. The corners, you kind of want to do them in a triangular uh, shape as best you can, so you can pull them and get a nice corner like this, see? See how that looks? You want that. So kind of give yourself a good little, little edge there and pull the material as tight as you can. See how this nice, this fleece molds to pretty much any shape you want it to. It comes out pretty good. Like I said, taking your time on the corners, pulling and laying as often as you can. And kind of molding all that really, really nicely. Now, if you didn't look at that, like the, shit, the really ugly bottom, and we looked on this side, that looks really good. Besides the debris that we just picked up from the floor, but that's not a big deal. There you go. That's a really, really nice uh, beauty board. The next thing is we're going to cut this material out and fold it underneath, same process, um, that way you get a really, really cool look. We're going to clean all this up right now and cut the, cut the access off. I'm going to go grab my scissors and then we're going to show you what to cut out through here. So now that your glue's all laid down, now we're going to do the cutting 
all I recommend is trim off the axis and then kind of pull and pull it over because we're going to do some stapling now. So what you do is you're going to pull it and kind of lay it as flat as you guys can and then grab your staple gun and then one of the good spots if it bunches nicely put it there. I always like putting one on a corner so that way the tension from here and here is like nice and stiff. Um, I just did this side really quick and I do the same thing grab it in a corner and then pull try to get that pole nice and flat the flatter the better nice and okay so we got all that now we're gonna do this corner over here because I got a nice big bunch of stuff here so I'm gonna cut the top off of this I don't need that much access like left over a lot. I'm kind of marrying it over here and then cut the left over here. That way that looks like I'm trying to flatten it as much as you guys can. I mean that's a big important step. Get that material nice and flat. get it flat, grab a staple, turn it this way, almost done. Now like again, since no one's going to see this, you can always just cut it off the leftover and blend it in. And you don't have to worry about what it looks like. If you're a perfectionist, by all means, take your time. I mean, I'm not going to argue that. I'm kind of in a little bit of a rush due to the fact that uh, I don't have much sunlight right now. I got probably another two hours worth of sunlight, so. I'm trying to go as fast, but as clean as possible. Nice. So. Once you have everything laid down the way you like it, again, get corners down. And I recommend, I mean, some people like to do staples on the edge. Uh, this piece of material is not going anywhere. It's not going to be seen and moved, moved at all. So, um, I mean, get it on curves. Kind of go on a eh, one. I mean, I'm going staple crazy, but I just want to make sure. That's it for that side. That yeah, looks pretty. A nice piece of wood right there. Or, so the next thing is we're gonna for this you want to cut around the middle. Just like this. Like that. And then 
give yourself about an inch and a half of material all around and then cut off the access like as much as you can because you're not going to need it just feel for it. Now, to make corners nice and pretty, there's a trick to it. I like doing kind of a triangular cut and then folding over. That way it curves. If you guys have a tip on that, comment down below. Maybe you guys can give me a better idea. But I always cut them kind of a triangular shape and it gives me the, the, the I guess the leverage or stretching material I need to fold it down underneath. So now we go back the other side. Now we have uh, cuts, and now we can lay some glue down. that dry a little bit and just lay it over. I like to start from the middle and work my way out. And if something is a little harder than normal to pull, that's why you got a staple gun. Pull the crud out of it and staple that guy. Same thing. Gotta keep your material from stretching or from moving from its place. This one's a little tricky because it's kind of like a little tiny square. So, this one I'm kind of guessing at how I'm going to cut this. Hopefully, the cuts give me the stretch I need. Look at that. She's pretty. Looks pretty good if you don't. I don't mind saying. And that, you guys, is a really, really nice beauty board. 
cut out for the bottom plate. We're gonna mount it and then mar do our marks for our um, uh, air compressors, and then we're gonna pre-drill everything um, for that, and then we're gonna make our holes for the tanks for the tank. So it's gonna be a little difficult to mount that one, but we're gonna do some little markings with a sharpie, so that way we can find out where we're at. Uh, I'm gonna staple a couple spots on this. Oh, this one complete. Now we're set. So let's put it back in and see how it sits. So now with the board mounted, looks really good. I mean, I know we have like a little gap over here, but this is a piece of wood that we found in my backyard, so we didn't have to spend any more money. My cardboard cutout was a lot bigger, but I mean, to to save money on this project, we had to do it this way. But like I said, this is a stealth pretty much um, set up so it's not a really big deal I mean for what it is this looks really good it looks clean it doesn't have any more wood around it I'm really happy with it I think uh, Tyler will be really happy with it once we get it all mounted and set up um, so the next thing is to mount the compressors the tank uh, I'm trying to think what else we need to do and the uh, all the wiring underneath because we got to tuck all the wiring underneath the, uh, the the panels. Once that's all done, then we'll actually wire it all up to the actual um, the battery and the relay, and then do some testing. So the biggest part of this DIY is all this wiring. How does it work? How do you run it? What do you need to do? Well, it's really really simple. The great thing about Airlift. They lay it all out for you. Here's your main relay, it's already wired. This actually goes to the manifold, you'll see that right there. You gotta mount this. This one right here, there's two here, and then there's two all the way at the end. These two go straight to the uh, air compressors, the power and ground. If you go all the way to the end of the wiring, and you follow it, there's another power and ground. Guess where these two go? They go to the battery. However, this has to be one has to be fused and the other one has to be grounded. Inside this car, there's two ground points in the actual uh, in the wheel well, so we'll show you what to do. Now, there's a lot of wire. We don't need half of amount of this wire, so a lot of this is actually going to be cut. Um, this portion of it won't be touched. Now, if you guys are running dual compressors. There's a secondary wire right here. It's a gray wire with a little thing. This is a jumper wire for a second uh, accessory wire to the second harness. If you bought the kit with the second relay uh, set up, I'm going to show you guys in just a moment. This is the second relay. This kit right here is really, really simple. It's got a power and ground again, it's got its own little relay, and it's got this little uh, switch. This plugs in to this part of the harness. That's why it's over here. This plugs into this bad boy right here. Really simple. This is the trigger switch to kick on the compressor. All you need to do with the secondary relay is run a power and ground. That's all you really need to do. They give you this crazy long wire because they think they're going to run it all the way into the uh, engine bay. But we're totally in luck. This stuff is all in the wheel well, so a lot of this stuff can be cut and shortened. So that is pretty much it. All you need to do is look inside of here, make sure the loom is just power and ground in here. If it is, 
cut, trim, and make it fit. We'll show you what we're going to do, but I'm just giving you guys very, very simple details right now. So now, that's a secondary relay. So back to the primary one. Back to these three again. You got the, you got the manifold wiring, this relay, power and ground, straight to the compressor, and then you have this one. Now, follow it down. Now, if you guys got the uh, auto leveling set up, these are the trigger switches for that. We're not going to need that, so that can be just uh, zip tied away. And now, here's these two random, really thin wires here. One's pink and one's black. One is actually the USB cable. I'm going to pull this out of the loom for you guys. This is a USB cable right there. This is for the remote control. This is the only wire on this car that's actually going to go all the way to the front of the car. Everything else stays in the wheel well, which is super cool because it's a lot less wires to run for you. So this one, it gets set aside. This is the other one I was talking about, the pink one. Now this pink one is the accessory wire, aka the trigger wire, which tells your air compressors to kick on or to actually have power when the ignition is in the on position. So your car can actually automatically kick on and the air compressor and everything turns on when the car is on, not when the car is off. That way you don't have problems with anything. Ah, whatever, this is the pink one right here. Here it is, pink wire. Okay, this is the one on this car that has to plug into the 643 relay. I will make make sure we show you where to, how you wrap it around and get it all in there so we can test it for triggering. So that's it. That's the entire that's the entirety of the wire setup on this car. Very 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 simple. I'm going to show you what's what else is next. Okay. <coughs> so hope you guys can see this. So I'm just pre doing like a mock up above the uh, the car. I'm just getting an idea. So the relays are going to sit. Uh, side by side right here one and two because the air uh, the tank sits right here and I don't want the tank to affect um, or get in the way of the relays uh, remember these two go straight to the compressor so one of these compressors will end up going here or this wire wire will go to the compressor and what you're gonna do I'm glad that uh, airlift actually um, splits the entire loom for you so this little tiny thin one we're not going to touch leave it alone this one though is only two wires in it so what you're going to do is that we only need the positive and negative positive right here which is really nice the uh the battery tower actually has a nut right there or a couple extra ones right here there's actually a uh, uh, looks like a spare one that has nothing attached to it Right above it, right over here on this side. Let me get you guys a view of that. Right here, there's nothing here. So what we can do is find a nut that fits that, and use that for your, um, um, for your. Jeez, uh, I can't even think right now. <laughs> for the compressor uh, wiring, uh, both of them can go here, which is freaking awesome because that's only two wires there. Um, bam. Uh, but that's actually going to be on this end. This is the uh, power end. So these two, power and then ground. Um, do not ground it to the battery. Never ground anything straight to the battery. You got to ground it to the chassis. So what's really nice, there is a grounding spot right here. There's one here. And if you want to go, there's one right underneath here. Uh, the factory one with the other battery, which is fine. You can ground it straight to that spot. Um, I think we're going to use that one because that one is actually the uh, going to look cleaner, so we don't have to see any wiring over here. So remember, these two, the ones that are coming next to the relay, go straight to the compressor. The other two are actually the ones that go to the battery and the ground. Um, you're going to do that twice. Um, because you have two relays for two compressors. All right, so for all you guys, I'm going to try to find the printout of this, but I'm going to show you guys this. This is the diagram for the wiring. So easiest way to do this is that 
where the main first um, the main part of the harness it's going to be here those are always going to go straight to the compressors very simple same with the secondary relay straight to the compressors the main wires the power and ground so those are the ones you can't cut you want to leave those alone you just want to split you know strip them so you can bolt them on but can't cut them uh, towards the end the back end of the loom you can cut that to length the back end remember that those are the ones that go straight to the battery so now that I um, I figured out how I'm going to run the wiring I'm going to show you guys how it's going to be done so here is the first relay now imagine we're underneath the board this relay is going to sit underneath here this is the uh, power and ground to the first uh, air compressor this is going to the first air compressor is going to be right here on the right done plugged in very simple nothing crazy now the loom goes this way now we're underneath the board this is the harness for the uh, manifold it's going to sit right here nice and pretty then what's left is the pink wire the accessory wire we're not going to cut this one we're going to leave that one alone you still have the USB wire which is a solid black one you leave that one alone now if you follow this one this is the last of the loom that comes off we're going to tuck it underneath everything's underneath the uh, underneath the wooden tray and go underneath and then go up that's our first terminal right here for the battery that's a positive now there's leftover slack there's a lot of leftover wire so what we're going to do is the ground cable is going to go down and over to over here to the factory ground that's over here underneath the board um, so I only need about another foot or two so right there so I'm gonna cut the rest of this loom right here perfect easy simple we're gonna cut it here because it's gonna have the positive and negative and I'm just gonna cut off the rest of the rest of the positive to where I need it for length and then we're done um, you're gonna need to fuse this so the nice thing about uh, airlift they provided everything you need to wire this up so You'll see there's two uh, fused reds, so you're going to need that. There's a black uh, fuse, 3 amp fuse, that's for the accessory wire, that pink one. That's another one that you need to fuse. They give you a bunch of little barrels here, so you can join these two together. Uh, these are the terminal rings that you're going to use on the battery. And then you're going to use a nut to hold it down. Okay? Make sure you pull all the fuses out. Uh, before you uh, actually uh, plug everything in that way there's no actual current going to the compressors uh, what I would re recommend is put these two together run it down underneath the car I mean underneath the board and done this one's gonna be in the tray right over here uh, we're gonna tuck that underneath and then not be seen hopefully I'll tuck it down this way out of the way so it's not visible at all alright so <sighs> now that we got pretty much the tank installed two compressors wired up all the uh, management is set up and you'll notice that everything's tucked underneath so it's gonna be look really really clean once we're done with it um, the next thing you guys need to do is make sure you install your water trap uh, we kind of kept it on the side so no one can actually really see it um, so we're going to leave it like kind of dangling down here on the bottom. Uh, we're going to fix its mounting a little bit. But this is kind of like the spot we're going to keep it at right here. Just like that. You guys can see that. Uh, we're going to run the airline down and underneath. And to the man management. Um, we ran into a small hiccup yesterday. Uh, running these, these airlines here. Uh, we're going to try to run it underneath the carpet. Uh, the issue is, is when we take the plastic off to put it underneath the carpet, it kind of doesn't work. Um, looks like we're going to have to take off this metal trim here across so this plastic piece comes off. But we'll show you guys uh, how it will look afterwards. But the next big part of the DIY uh, for the air suspension is the controller USB cable. That all has to be run alongside this trim right here all the way to the back and we're going to try to run it across and into the center console um, with a lot of interior that needs to be removed without damaging anything which is going to be fun so yeah
There's Tyler putting on the wheels. Final steps. We are finally coming into the finish line. And the last bit is once he gets those wheels on, is the last thing we gotta drill the holes for the uh, dampening adjusters for the, uh, the shocks. Um, so pretty much grab a uh, Phillips screwdriver, get the center and punch it so you know where to start to drill on both sides. Just like I said, right in the middle. Make the hole uh, tiny and then work your way up in sizes on both sides and then go from there. Once you get that done, I'm going to give you guys a quick... So we are here now. The car is officially on the ground. And this is going to be the first time we're going to air it out. So, enjoy guys, because this is, uh, what, a week of a lot of work? Yes, sir. Actually, no, it's your car. You do the no, honors, no, man. You, this is your show. I want you to have uh, the honors. <laughs> here we go, man. You want to close the hood? I'm going to do the back first. Uh. Fully aired out. How she looks, Tyler? A lot better. <laughs> I mean, holy smokes. Yep. This we, thing is... We were cutting it close in the rear, but... Dang! This thing is low! <laughs> Whoo! Still needs a little bit more in the front, but... It, tu it tucks. Yeah, like I'm talking right there. <laughs> there you go, guys. We're going to film this car after a good cleanup and a wash, but for now this looks pretty dang good. Got to give a big thanks to Tyler Thank for, you. <laughs> for letting me do it on his car. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. You want to open the trunk really quick? Yep. And now you guys can see the final, final cleanup. You guys can tell there's nothing here. And then, wham! So we ended up tucking everything on the sides, hitting it, and then just put everything back in. I think uh, for not like trying to make it a showpiece, just make it a nice fun piece. It's pretty good. That's awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, Tyler. So air it up. And then I'm going to make a cool video after this. He's so excited. <laughs> He's excited. I'm excited. He's excited. I was excited just putting it together. Whew, keep going. So you got to set the controls Yeah, I have, to, I have to calibrate the whole system first. All the way up. There we go. That's it. That's max height. Yeah, it's actually a lot lower even at max height. So you got a lot of calibrating to do afterwards. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage with Tyler. And his 2011 <laughs> Audi A4 Avant with Airlift 3P full performance suspension. Um, now we're going to do the calibration. I mean, for that, for you, that guys, I'm not going to walk you through because that's just something you guys can do with the manual. It's really, really straightforward. So, thanks again for watching. Peace out. We're going to post this soon.
Another time and space A parallel universe is falling on its face When out of the chaos, who else could it be? But the animal adventurers from SPACE! Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare Mutants and aliens and toads beware You're looking for adventure, well this is it With Jenny dead eye blinking and Willie to win I said Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare I'm now on the Bucky O'Hare on the Toad Wars In the battle of the universe, you don't know what's next You only know amphibians are made it complex When you check out your scanner and the evil that it bodes There's only one course of action Let's go for some toads! Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare He goes where no ordinary rabbit would dare If your righteous indignation has suffered a hit And your photon accelerator is broken a bit And you're losing your mind and you're having a fit Get the funky fresh rabbit who can take care of it!